An investigation into drinking water is generating some big concerns out there today. This is a study that was done, some research by the Associated Press, and they found traces of prescription and over the counter drugs in drinking water supplies that go to more than 40 million people in this country. They said they found antibiotics, mood stabilizers, sex hormones, and lots of other drugs in some of the tap water out there. The affected water supplies included 24 major metropolitan areas from Southern California to New Jersey. Let's take a look at how this could happen. It all starts when someone flushes drugs down the toilet. I think everybody has done this at some point in their life. You think you're getting rid of them in, the, in a way that uh, won't allow kids to get their hands on them, anything like that. Well, it travels into a water treatment plant, then it goes into a reservoir, then back to another water treatment plant before becoming tap water in the U.S. And let's be clear, Martha, the, the animated graphic that we just showed is a nice way of displaying explaining how these get into our water supply. Remember the other way, human waste. It's not just people discarding their prescription medications right. in the toilet. A lot of drugs are metabolized or processed through the kidneys and are excreted in through the toilet and our reservoir, our sewage system, and find its way back to our water. And I think that is cause for concern. It is. It's a scary thought. I think a lot of people think, well, I almost always drink, you know, bottled water these right. days, so no problem. Right. right or wrong? Wrong, because there is, first of all, bottled water is not subject to the same level of testing. However, and in addition, there is a lot to substantiate the fact that a lot of bottled water is merely repackaged tap water. So I think when people consider this, you need to remember two very important points, frequency and intensity. So in order to have anything reach a toxic level, you need either a very high frequency, which would be drinking drinking water every single day for 50 years of your life. Which or we all do. Correct. <laughs> or you need a high intensity, which is, you know, a, a, a strong dose or concentration. The intensity might not be high here, but certainly the frequency is. So I think it's something that needs closer and, study. And there's water in everything. I mean, there's water in juice. Coffee. There's water in That's soda. Right. There's water in coffee. That's so right. what can you do to try to minimize your risk? Well, you know, you can't live your life in a plastic bubble, obviously, and no one gets out of life alive. So this is just an example of how environmental toxins and exposures can and really contribute to health co causes and problems for us. I think if you want to drink seltzer or club soda, that's one way. We, we can't avoid drinking Let water, me as before you, you go, though, because there's all these things now about ways to get toxins out of your body, all sorts of stuff out there. Any of that will work for this? Absolutely not. Absolutely and again, not. you know, I think that as the EPA had commented earlier, as testing abilities get more and more sophisticated, we are going to find more and more things around us in our environment. I think it's cause for concern, not panic at this point. All right. Thanks, you I bet. guess. Yeah. Dr. Jennifer Ashton <laughs> uh, on the, uh, the dirty water issue right. that's out there in some ways. Okay, thanks very much, Dr. Good to have you. you bet. Here.